So now we come to the middle portion of uh, the number 153 in itself in Hebrew Gematria. We've already seen a couple of examples uh, in connection with uh, 153 and 666 and their relationship. Uh, but I want to focus particularly on this 153 in Hebrew Gamatry and show you some cases, some, some, some instances uh, of what, what it turns out to be. Okay, so this is the Hebrew Gamatria system we saw earlier, right? We got these 22 letters and you have all these numbers. Now, if I take that system, in the book of Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, we have this phrase. Oh, by the way, most of the phrases that I take and show with the numbers are taken from the Bible. Those phrases occur in the Bible. And where if it doesn't, I will tell you so. Ani Adonai Elohecha. Ani Adonai Elohecha. Or Ani Yehovah Elohecha. I am the Lord thy God. You see, what was happening is in John chapter 21 in that incident at the Sea of Galilee was that these guys initially did not recognize the Lord. Why? Because he did not appear with the same sort of facial features perhaps to them and that is why they did not recognize. You should read that. I don't want to explain that again, but if you go read the Gospels, he appeared to them in another form. We read in Luke, Luke's Gospel 24 elsewhere. Uh, Mark's gospel, different places, they did not recognize him. They only recognized him from his intrinsic personality. For example, if you cover up the face of somebody and they speak, or even if the voice is different, but if they speak the kind of words in a certain way, if you're very familiar with that person, you will recognize the person. That is what the Lord wanted them to recognize, the inside person in him, not the external appearance. There we have when he did this miracle they recognized immediately who it was and it says no man dared to ask him who are you because they knew that it was the Lord and therefore through this miracle it is as though he is declaring Ani Adonai Elohecha I am Yehovah your God well, so I am claiming Jesus is Yehovah incarnate incarnate uh, avatar is a is a term in Sanskrit uh, where you have incarnations of uh, God like that you have you have Jesus is the or Yeshua is the incarnation of Yehovah Ani Yehovah Elohecha that's what he says that is a 153 declaration of his deity of of his identity so 153 uh, actually oh by the way if you want to um, check the number you can go to this torahcalc.com slash gematria put that whatever you don't have to put in these dots and dashes these vowel points are not required you can type in using this uh, typewriter here you'll get this is standard gematria 153 here is 153 you see right okay another one is melech hakevod yehovah melech hakevod the king of glory is the lord King of glory is the Lord in Psalm 24. We have a question. Who is the King of glory? The Lord uh, strong and mighty. It says in those sort of answers are given in Psalm 24. You can check that. This phrase is taken straight from uh, Psalm 24. It occurs two places. Uh, it turns out to be 153. Genesis 6 4. Genesis 6 4. We have Bene Ha Elohim. This is a well-known phrase. Um, if you research 153, you will come across this one. Everybody knows that sons of God, Beneha Elohim, adds up to 153 in Hebrew Gamatria. And this is a very well-known and important observation which we need to keep in mind. And you see, this refers to the the children of these guys in Genesis chapter 6, 4, where of course they, they came in and they fell. But as many as have believed in him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So those who believe in him are the sons of God, Beneha Elohim, God's people. Here you have Beneha Levi Im, 1 Chronicles 15, 15. Remember I showed you the Levites who taught the people? That those guys who are teaching, that teaching the instruction, that word was 153, do you remember? And so here we have Beneha Leviim, the sons of the Levites, is 153, according to the same method that uh, we have just seen. 
Also, in 1 Samuel 10, 5, we have, we have Hebel Nevi'im. Hebel Nevi'im. You see, Samuel had a school of prophets, as it were. Like a bunch of guys were there, you know, learning from Samuel. And they were doing mystical practices and singing and dancing and prophesying with instruments of music. Uh to reach higher levels of cognition and receive, how do we say, receive Ruach HaKodesh, divine inspiration, by engaging themselves in holy practices. This was the practice going on. If you did not know, oh, are there such things in the Bible? Well, you should read those passages. It was started by Samuel. That place was in Naioth, N-A-I-O-T-H in the English Bible, Naioth. And when he um, anointed Saul to be king, he told them, told him that uh, when you go down uh, now from here, you will find some uh, a company of prophets. It says in the King James Bible, uh, the word is Hevel Nevi'im, which uh, the word Hevel means a band, a band which is used to bind together. Okay, so these guys are bound together by a common oath and probably share their goods and food and everything. They stay together. They have left the normal style of living uh, or the regular society and join this, you know, uh, a club of uh, prophets, you can say. They, they had families, some of them had wives, etc. But they had, it's, it's like a big band of prophets uh, only engaging themselves most of the time in spiritual activities, including prophesying and singing with instruments of music. Okay, this number, this phrase, Hevel Naviim, also sums up to 153. So we are seeing now, uh, okay, keep, keep that. We are seeing, we just saw Bene Ha Elohim, Bene Leviim, Hevel, um, you know, Hevel Naviim, Bene Ha Leviim, Hevel Naviim. Band of prophets, sons of the Levites, priests, and sons of God. And Arm Gadol, great people, Deuteronomy 128. All these references basically refer to the Lord's people as his sons, sons of God, and the prophets of God, the priests of God. 153 is referring to the Lord's name, Ani Adonai Elohecha, right? And uh, it refers to his people, sons, prophets, priests, etc., now, I mentioned to you the standard method, um, which we have already seen. These letters here that I have highlighted, Kaf, Mem, Nun, Pe, Tzade, the ones which have this red border, have different forms when those letters are found at the end of the word. When these letters are found at the end of the word, you have this Kaf, Mem, Nun, Pe, Tzade, these letters are called Sofit, or the ending forms. And therefore, they, there's another method where they give different values to these, which occur at the end of the word. And so you continue from 400 to 500, 600 till 900. And so the scheme is then 1 to 9, 10 to 90, 100 to 900. So essentially, you, you multiply by 10, you get these. You multiply by another 10, you get these. This is the scheme called Mispar Gadol, or standard Sofit method okay there's another method called ordinal method a mispar siduri where instead of giving 1 to 9 and 10 to 90 you just give the places you see 1 to 9 1 to 9 remains the same and the next is 10 and then 11 12 13 14 basically you give the place numbers the numbers for the place uh, the, the where the place numbers you can say uh, till 27 okay this is called mispar siduri there's another mispar katan. Ignore that. We, do, we don't need this at this moment. Now, I'm now going to focus on this mispar siduri. The place values of the alphabet of Hebrew. Place values. Why place values? There is a very important um, reasoning behind that. Because 153 being a triangular number. We talk about triangular numbers. Which you get by adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 etc till 17 and therefore 
This is the same method that we are using in the place value method because the first is Aleph, Beth, Gimel. So if you add all these numbers till 17, 1 to 17 letters in the Hebrew alphabet add up to 153. Therefore, taking the place values uh, will give us a better control of uh, finding out phrases in the Bible which add up to 153 because each number has a place value. So then using this method, I will try to find, I tried to find the names and I found some mind-boggling occurrences uh, of the Lord's name, the Lord's name. Psalm 135 verse 13. I want you to pay attention on this number. 153 are the digits here. Okay, There is no 153rd Psalm obviously, but the digits are the same. 135 and you have 13 again the same. There is no other digits occurring. Only digit 1, digit 5, digit 3. The first part of the, the Psalm 153 verse 13 has two parts. And the first part is Adonai Shimcha Leolam or Yehovah Shimcha Leolam. Lord, thy name is forever. Lord, thy name is forever. 153. Okay. Now, the next part, it continues. Again, it, he says, Adonai Zikrecha Ledor Vador. Or Yehovah Zikrecha Ledor Vador. Lord, thy memorial or thy remembrance is to from generation to generation. Okay, so your name is forever and ever and your remembrance or your memorial is from generation to generation. That's the verse in verse 13 in Psalm 135. By the way, the whole verse in two parts. First part is 153. Second part is 153. These are the phrases you can remember. Uh, you know, to praise the Lord. Yehovah Shimcha Leolam. Yehovah Zikrecha Le Dor Vador. 153, 153. Now, here I put the same numbers. Now I change this to Mispar Siduri Ordinal. Here is where 153. Here you can see 153. This can be verified. Nothing is dodgy here, okay? This is, this is all uh, worked out very well. So these are the two different phrases. Now, I mentioned Adonai Shimcha Leolam, Zikrecha. Uh, so Shimcha means your name. Zikrecha means thy memorial or thy remembrance. You see, this name and remembrance are very important because when the Lord declared his name to Moses at the burning bush, this is what he said. The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Adonai or Yehovah Elohe Avotekem, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Ve Elohe Yaakov, Shalachni, Elekem, Ze Shemi Leolam, Ve Ze Zikri Ledor Dor. Shemi, my name. My memorial, my zikri. This is exactly what he's saying. Yehovah Shimcha Leolam, Yehovah Zikrecha Ledor Vador. Ze Shemi Leolam. This is my name. Shimcha means your name. Shemi means my name. Zikrecha is your memorial or your remembrance. Zikri is my memorial the lord is saying my name is forever my memorial my gen my remembrance is to all generations so by the way zikri remembrance means like you know the the father's dna is found in his children you know, in every cell so it is a memory of the father found in every cell and then they have their children if the man if the boy has the further ch children the father's Y DNA passes on to generations and generations. Well, of course, subject to mutations on this earth. Now, the remembrance of the Lord, the Lord's imprint and stamp is present in every atom, every molecule, every electron, proton, neutron, and a quark. Okay, that's how it is present throughout all the world. They cried in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, the seraphim saying to one another holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory 
all earth is full of his glory. He's memorial unto all generations. Right. Let's look at another interesting phrase uh, that adds up to 153. Ha Adon Yehovah Elohe Israel. Ha Adon Yehovah Elohe Israel. This phrase taken directly from Exodus chapter 34, verse 23. The Lord God of Israel, or the Lord Yehovah of Israel. 153. He's basically declaring himself because they did not initially recognize, but they recognized who he is. Ha Adon Yehovah Elohe Yisrael. Again, here we have in 2 Chron 1 Chronicles 22 18, Yehovah Elohechem Imachem, the Lord, your God. This is your is plural. Your Elohechem means your God, your is being plural, is with you. Imachem, Imachem. Remember, Immanuel, Immanuel. Im, im means with. Imanu means with us. Immanuel means with us is God. So Imachem means he is with you. Who is with you? The Lord is with you. Remember, we already talked about it earlier. Adonai, uh, uh, you know, Bechem. Adonai Elohek, uh, I think El Bechem is the word which we have used earlier. I told you to remember that previously. It's the same concept. The Lord being with his people. The Lord being with his people is um, is hinted at in this as well. And so essentially what we are seeing here is even if you take the second method of the Mispar Siduri, the place values of the Hebrew alphabet, it's still, we get, we get a fantastic phrases right from the Bible. Nothing is cooked up, okay? Right from the Bible, they refer to the Lord's name. Now, let us now focus, uh, come back to this verse in John chapter 21, uh, verse 11. Simon Peter went up and drew in the net 153 fishes. See, the Lord, um, uh, well, uh, well, so you have 153 fishes. Now, what I did here is I took the Hebrew text of uh, the English text. Well, New Testament is written in Greek. Well, so they say. Uh, that is what we have at the moment. Of course, the New Testament um, is probably, most likely, John's Gospel at least, was probably written uh, in the Greek. However, uh, it may have been thought in Hebrew and then written down in Greek. Or whatever may have happened, it doesn't matter. But what I did is I took a translation, back translation in, of a Salkinson, Salkinson Ginsberg Hebrew New Testament. And what I get is this. Uh, you know, I just reproduced the whole verse here. And this phrase, Vehi melea dagim gedolim. And it was full of great fishes. That's the phrase. That phrase, Vehi melea dagim gedolim. These are the values. You add them up, 153. Can you believe it? In the Hebrew translation of the New Testament, in that very verse, just before 153 occurs, right before the phrase before 153 itself adds up to 153. Is, isn't, is that a coincidence? Do you think that Salkins and Ginsberg somehow like cooked up this one? Not at all. They just wrote it down. I think it turned out that it adds up in this method. Oh, by the way, they don't use this particular method. Ordinal method is what I've been using for quite some time, haven't I? Right, so again, you want to verify, put that in here, you get this number. Now, what's the significance of the fishes? 153 fishes. You see, the Lord said to the apostles, Follow me and I will make you the fishers of men. So these guys are fishers of men. And so they who do they catch? They catch men. And therefore the fishes that are caught point to men who are caught. Men are caught. Who are the men who are caught? The, those who are going to be his disciples or his children. God's people are the ones who are going to be caught by the apostles. Okay. Therefore, 153 not only refers to the Lord's name, but it also refers to the Lord's people, sons, prophets, priests, as we have seen. We will see more about the people as well. 